How's it going everybody? It's Rosine here for Astrophotography on a hot and sweaty Friday evening night. I'm sure you needed to know that information. It's like half past eight, it's still quite warm outside, and it's full moon. And actually, the full moon is a very important part of tonight's purpose. See, I've wondered this question and I've seen other people wonder this question as well. And that question is, if you have a dual narrowband pass filter like an Optolong L Extreme, do you still need a dedicated hydrogen alpha filter? In this case, it's going to be the ZWO 7 nanometer hydrogen alpha filter. So I actually thought this is going to be great because I can just shoot this over there and I'm going to do a comparison of the two. So why is full moon important? This is probably going to be one of the biggest tests of a hydrogen alpha filter. I personally, especially during moon phases, break out HA filters. I'm sure you do, many other people do as well. So will the dedicated filter resist moon glow more than the dual filter, for example? So I'm really looking forward to this. The methodology is going to be this. I'm going to use, because I have a, a luminous filter, I have a hydrogen alpha filter, I have the dual pan pass filter, and a filter wheel and an autofocuser. So I have everything I need to do for this test. I'm gonna shoot some luminance because first of all, I need to carry on with a bit more testing with the stellar mirror for star colors. So I'm gonna use luminance for that. And then I'm also gonna use luminance as like a control of the Pelican Nebula. I'm then gonna swap over to something like the HA filter and take five minute long images, hopefully two hours worth of five, five minute long images. And then I'll swap to the L Extreme, take five minute images for about two hours, something like that. And then I'll stack them and compare the two. I'll use something like Cyril to pull the HA data out of the L Extreme stack. And we're gonna compare from there. So yeah, this is why I think a full moon night with a color camera is really important for this test. I personally would not use a dual band pass filter with a mono camera. I just, you could, but I, that's not what they were designed for. They're for color images. And full moon is going to be the biggest test for these filters. So I'm really excited for this. So what was, what was turning out to be one of those bin off nights where ugh, maybe not because of the full moon. I feel like it's going to be quite interesting. Just got to set it all up. I need to change the filters over. I need to set the filter wheel up and get set up outside. If you can hear squeaking in the background, I'm really sorry. It's Finn playing with, <laughs> with the squeaky ball and he's going to town on it. Good grief, is he going to town on this squeaky ball? So yeah, I'm looking forward to tonight. I'm gonna start getting set up now. All right, so I got the filter wheel here and I have my 533 color camera there and we can see that's where the Alex stream is. So just need to open this filter wheel up and change it around. So at the minute I've got these set up as L R G B S H O. No, wait, I've already made this mistake once. L R G B H O S. So the easiest thing to do is literally just going to be set the L extreme into position eight. And there we have it. That was what a full filter wheel looks like. It's pretty interesting actually. So I'm just going to put the backing plate back on that and try to mentally remember where these filters are. And now I'm just going to put the camera against the filter wheel. That's ready to go on the telescope. Look at this grass, man. The sun's absolutely parched it. It's just like, just like straw over here. <laughs> just like hay. Hopefully it rains soon. Nope, nope, it's too hot. It's too hot. Nope, nope. Nope, 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 nope.
Oh, that's better. All right, so what we're going to do now is look at the data, see what's going on here. This is the luminance stack. As mentioned, this is just a control. So I'm not actually looking for the signal to noise ratio. I'm looking for the gradients and we can see there's a gradient, very strong gradient in the top left hand corner, some on the bottom left hand, but it's mainly coming from the left side inwards. And if we open up Stellarium, we can see that's going to make sense. So this was the night I shot it, the 12th of August and we can see that this is the way the picture is orientated. Don't worry about the rotation of the camera, that's irrelevant. If we zoom out and find where the moon is, there. So the moon is there, and the Pelican Nebula, if I can type right, is there. So this checks out, look where the box is. This makes sense as to where this gradient is coming in. So this is what we're looking for our filters to do. So the, the test is how good have the filters blocked this? So what I can go straight to is the edits I've done. These are just, these aren't the greatest edits I can do with these files, but we're looking at the edit itself. Again, we're looking at the block. So this is the L extreme and this isn't uh, hydrogen alpha extraction so this is as it should be so I've not pulled out only the HA level layer so this will still have the O3 in it and we can see in the corner here it's okay there is some blocking going on I can't see a big gradient through it and same with the hydrogen alpha I can't see a big gradient coming in the side and even when we only go into the red channel, there's no gradient. So in this example, I'd be happy to say that the L extreme and the full moon have blocked enough of the moon glow, especially when we look at how far away the Pelican was from the moon. So the evening O3 has blocked it. So. I'd be happy using the L extreme in the moon, full moon, if I was that far away. Next, I'm going to look at the detail, really. So, yes, I could do a lot better job editing this. That's not what we're looking at. I want to look at the detail in the hydrogen alpha. So that's the red channel. And we can see that some of the wisps are quite sharp. There is a lot of hydrogen alpha detail picked up, especially around here. These globules here and there and the details within the wings of the pelican that's all good but I personally feel like the dedicated hydrogen alpha filter has better detail now I'm I would imagine with some editing tricks you could definitely sharpen these parts up and make it as contrasty as the dedicated hydrogen alpha filter but I've done my best to uh, copy the edit from each to each as best as I can. But I would still say in this circumstance, the dedicated filter has the better detail. Now let's look at a single image. So this is a single hydrogen alpha image. It's got, it's had a couple of curve stretches applied to it. And all in all, it looks okay, but we're going to zoom into the eye of the pelican here. I'm going to go into 100% around the eye. We're going to look at the signal to noise ratio now. And there is obviously some noise, but you know, for a single sub on a hydrogen alpha filter on a color camera, this is pretty good. I would say this is relatively clean. That probably speaks more about the camera than anything else. And if we look at the single L extreme image, so I've done my best again to match these. If we look at the histogram, they're on the same point, near abouts, with the same mean. So I'm happy that this is comparable. 
So into the L Extreme. Again, looks okay. And as we zoom into the eye of the Pelican, I would say that this is more noisy. So the red channel alone is brighter, but just for the SNR, for the signal to noise ratio, I would be willing to say there is more detail, but it's more noisier. The, the hydrogen alpha filter seems to be cleaner to my eyes. Now I put another stretch on it to try and get some more detail out. And we can see this is where the, the, the fact that it's a single image really becomes apparent. So this is the hydrogen alpha single picture with an aggressive stretch on it. You can see how noisy it is. And if we do the same to the L extreme, at this point, I would say the L Extreme is still noisier That's on the red channel. So if we go do the same thing to the L Extreme, uh, a more st aggressive stretch to it. Again, the histograms very similar in my opinion. And I would still say that the L Extreme is noisier. We zoom in 200%. I mean, I don't think many people are going to pixel people like this, but this is a comparison. So we're going to pixel people away. Yeah, at 200%, I would definitely say the L Extreme is a lot more noisier. And if we then isolate the red layer only, it gets even worse. Like this is a very sad story in my opinion. So I would definitely say with just the red filter on the red channel with a single that the hydrogen alpha was cleaner. And though, so when we actually do the one hour stretch, so this is 12 by five minute subs, so one hour with just a couple of curve stretches to it. This data in general looks nice. And then we zoom into the eye again. So just to make you aware, all these images were stacked the same way. These two tests were stacked the same way. There were five by 12 images. So the same light stack, 50 darks, 50 flats, 50 biases, and the darks were the same for both. So again, let's zoom in here. At this point, I've isolated the red channel here because, you know, as we saw in the other photo, it's just red. So we want the red detail, we want the red channel. Now I would say that they're kind of comparable. There's a, naturally there's a bit of noise, a uh, color noise in the L Extreme. Let's go into 200. So there's obviously some color noise in the L Extreme, which we're not seeing in the Hydrogen Alpha. But I would probably say the L Extreme is cleaner. Now I'm going to just pull up the red channel because it's Hydrogen Alpha versus Hydrogen Alpha. And I would say I would be happy with both. They're comparable. I would also say with matched histograms that the hydrogen alpha is cleaner. But if I actually match the brightness, so I've made a few more stretches to make sure that they're very similar in brightness, we can see now that the hydrogen alpha stack is a bit more noisy. It's been stretched a bit more. So this is the L extreme again. And this is the Hydrogen Alpha with a matched brightness. So yeah, I would say in this case that the L Extreme is cleaner. So if you put all the channels back on, but if we only isolate the red. Then 
the Alixtreme is a touch cleaner. But, you know, if you're not pixel peeping so bad, I would say they're, they're pretty much comparable. Again, I think the detail in the Hydrogen Alpha is a little bit better. I think it's just a little bit more pronounced, but there's nothing that you couldn't fix with editing. And these are only one hour stacks. But when it comes to these ones that I've put a bit of editing time into, I prefer the dedicated filter, the dedicated Hydrogen Alpha filter. But to answer the original question, they are doing a grand job of blocking the moonlight. Obviously you wouldn't want to shoot right next to the moon because no filter is going to resist that. But if you've got a good distance away from the moon, full moon with like a, an L extreme or a dedicated hydrogen alpha filter, I think you're going to be fine because it's definitely resisted that moon glow. Especially when you compare it again back to the original we can see this gradient is very apparent. But that's a comparison of the data and the resistance of these filters. Again, I'm not looking for the transmissibility. I'm not looking for anything like that. It's not a comparison of ZWO versus Optolong. I'm just looking at the blocking ability of a dual narrowband versus a dedicated filter. And it just so happens that I think in most cases the dedicated filter this was dithered. The dedicated filter actually had better SNR until we stretch it too far. In that case, I think the Alex Stream is better. But the Alex Stream also has, when combined, it has three channels to work with. It has R, G, and B to work with rather than just red. But considering that most people say that, you know, a hydrogen alpha filter is, you, you shouldn't use it with a color camera because you're just going to get bad results. I think for a one hour stack with some aggressive edits, this is okay. If this was like a two, three, four hour stack, I think it would look good. That's not to say a mono camera wouldn't look better. I'm just saying if you have a color camera, don't worry about using a dedicated filter. So that's just my thoughts on it. I'm not here to give you a definitive answer one way or another. It's here to be a test and you can draw your own conclusions from it. I will put these on the website at some point, but that is that. So yeah, I like the look of the dedicated filter, but that isn't to say that if you had a dual narrowband filter on a full moon, you can't use it. I can now see ever so slight hints of a gradient, I think. But I think I might have been actually just looking at this data too long. So yeah, I personally feel at this test, I feel like I prefer the dedicated hydrogen alpha filter, but that isn't to say that if you have an l Extreme or dual narrowband filter, that that lets you oxygen three as well, you could extract the HA or just use the red channel. And I think you'd get a pretty good result. Obviously, if you, you don't shoot right next to the moon, that's just gonna end up bad. But yeah. Well, let me know in the comments what you think, if you agree with this test. Uh, if you've done any testing like this yourself, or if this has been helpful for you, let me know. And in the meantime, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching. Hope you have clear skies and keep looking up, keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later.